Coming up, several homes are evacuated due to a lake leak. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Several homes were evacuated in the Llewellyn community of Harlan County tonight. Emergency crews say a privately owned lake is leaking. A shelter was opened at a nearby church. That's where WIMT's Madison Carmouche is live tonight with the latest. Madison. Good evening, Steve. I'm here at the Llewellyn Pentecostal Church, which has been offered as a shelter for those impacted by the flooding at the Lake Llewellyn leak. The judge executive Dan Mosley says they have declared a state of emergency so that they could begin working on that privately owned lakes leak and subduing some of that flooding that was going on now that was causing a potential harm to about seven homes in that community with one in particular gaining most of that flooding. We attempted initially to place a board that would cover the hole out into the water by using uh, just a stick uh, and literally trying to see if we could cover the hole to stop the water from coming out. It worked for a few minutes, but then the whirlpool started again. The solution to divert the water was to have a pump installed that was pumping that water into Clover Fork so that that pooling would kind of stop in that community. Now the one home that was getting most of that flooding, they decided to cut the road that was owned by the county right there to create a drain also into Clover Fork and create some relief for that home right there. But I'm going to send it back to you all. But for now, live in Harlan County, Madison Carmouche, back to you. All right, Madison, thank you for that uh, live update. A little hard to tell exactly how much uh, damage was done by that leak so far. Of course, we'll stay on top of this story and update you as we learn more on WYMT.com and the WYMT News app. It's important to note, too, we've heard of no injuries or anything like that related to this leak tonight. We are tracking some dry weather and some chilly weather as we close out your Wednesday across the region. Check out these current temperatures. Most of us right now in the 30s and 40s, sitting at 39 for London, 37 for Irvin, also Manchester and Hazard, up to 46 in Pikeville, 47 over in Jackson at this hour. Up on the radar, we are dry, also clear, thanks to high pressure. So because of that clear sky, we are tracking some more very cold weather as you wake up on Thursday. Low temperatures are close to or below freezing in some areas in the middle to lower 30s, so be sure to grab the jacket as you wake up and walk out the door on Thursday. Speaking of your Thursday, some more mild weather is on tap. High temperatures top out in the upper 50s, possibly some lower 60s by Thursday afternoon, so we are well above average. Also watching out for a few stray rain chances on Thursday. Not going to rain everywhere or all day, but some of you may see a few showers by Thursday evening. Higher rain or snow chances on the way by Friday. More details on that winter weather threat coming up in just a few minutes. Steve Cameron, thank you. Police say at least one person was killed and more than 20 others were shot, including several children during a parade celebrating the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl victory. Kansas City officials say they've detained three people as they investigate the mass shooting. CBS's Brian Locke has the latest. Kansas City, Missouri's day of celebration turned deadly in a split second. There were shots fired on the west side of Union Station. Immediately, officers responded to the area, took two people into custody, and also immediately rendered life-sustaining aid to those victims. Tiffany Null says she was standing shoulder to shoulder with spectators at the Chiefs' Super Bowl victory parade when shots rang out. But I heard a pop, and then you just heard screaming, and everybody in front of me just started running, and I... I started yelling, what's going on, what's going on? And a, a woman yelled, they're shooting, they're shooting. Witnesses describe how terrified fans began to run for cover. 
I was just telling everybody to get down, get down, and then they get out the way and the officers were coming around. Authorities say several gunshot victims sustained life-threatening injuries. Parades, rallies, schools, movies, it seems like almost nothing is safe. Kansas City Mayor Quinton Lucas has joined with mayors across the country in calling for new laws to curb gun violence, including mandating universal background checks. I'm angry at what happened today. The people who came to this celebration should expect a safe environment. Law enforcement sources tell CBS News there is no evidence that Wednesday's mass shooting was an act of terrorism. Brian Locke, CBS News, Kansas City. Radio station KKFI says its DJ, Lisa Lopez, died in the shooting. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland has been briefed on the shooting. Both the FBI and ATF were at the parade to help with security. Both agencies are now assisting police in the locally led investigation. Administrators with Corbin Independent Schools say they have grief counselors available for students following a Whitley County crash that killed a 10 year old. Two people died in that crash early yesterday, including 10 year old Drake Sutherland. Police say the crash happened across from the Bee Creek Market on Bee Creek Road. Police also say another child was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. One Eastern Kentucky County is cracking down on animal cruelty. The Estill County Animal Shelter is no stranger to animal abuse and neglect. Last week, shelter workers were confronted by someone who threatened to kill puppies with a hammer if they did not take them in. The shelter is now partnering with the Estill County Sheriff's Office to combat these situations. Sheriff Chris Flynn says they are dealing with three to five cases at this moment. Uh, here recently, it's been a lot of hoarding type cases, uh, some even meeting the you know definition of the animal cruelty uh, criminal charge. Flynn says his office will be holding pet owners accountable when their pets are not up to date on certain vaccinations like their rabies shots. In Pulaski County, a former office manager for a Kentucky Economic Development Group pleaded guilty to wire fraud. Lisa Gadbury pleaded guilty after she was found to have spent company money on her finances. The Lexington Herald Leader reports Gadbury was federally charged with one count of wire fraud for misspending $142,000 from the agency during five years. Gadbury's plea agreement alleges she used the company's credit card on personal expenses between 2015 to 2019. Gadbury has not been sentenced yet. The Pike County Physical Court just filled an empty seat left behind when a commissioner resigned at the end of last month. Commissioner Orville Blackburn resigned effective January 31st for health reasons, which left an empty seat for the county's District 3 commissioner. Governor Andy Bashir signed an executive order today naming Pike County Minister Jim Absher as the temporary commissioner who will serve until a special election in November. The local Pike County uh, Republican Executive Committee and the Democratic Executive Committee will choose candidates from the respective parties to run in that special election. Judge Executive Ray Jones says District 3 will continue to be in good hands and Absher will serve the county well in the interim. Lawmakers are proposing a new bill that would make it easier for coroners to cremate people who do not have the resources to pay for it. The coroners say that cremating unclaimed or unidentified bodies would be easier and cheaper than performing burials. The bill does not require that bodies of indigent people be cremated, but it will put the decision between burial and cremation on the government paying for the process. Officials say indigent burials have become more common in recent years, and taxpayers are the ones bearing the cost. The bill unanimously passed through a committee and now goes to the full Senate. A House Education Committee approved a bill that would benefit Eastern Kentucky University in Richmond. They passed House Bill 407. It would allow EKU to offer medical degrees for practice and licensure in osteopathic medicine. We first told you about this last month. EKU would be the first public college in the state to give out the degree. Leaders say the program would help alleviate the shortage of health care providers in the state. A bill that would limit how many sick days teachers can cash out of, upon retirement is moving forward. Senate Bill 4 passed the Senate 24 to 12 today. There was some Republican opposition to the bill. It now goes to the House. 
A recent independent study was released regarding the Kentucky Community and Technical College System. The study outlines the economic impact the system has made on the Commonwealth. The report determined that KCTCS added $3.9 billion in annual income to Kentucky's economy during the 2022-23 fiscal year. Earlier today, KCTCS President Ryan Quarles broke down what this really means for the Commonwealth. That's about 1.6% of the total economy of Kentucky uh, that lies at the feet of our community and technical colleges. And what does that translate into? Well, it means that Kentuckians that go through our programs are making more money. On average, $10,000 more annually if you uh, acquire a degree, whether it's welding, electrician, Dr. Quarrell says this is also a huge driving force for recruiting companies, saying most want to ensure that there are trained workers available. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, could new guidelines be coming soon for those who test positive for COVID-19? Plus, we are not done with winter just yet. The details on that next snow chance after this break.